This demonstration concerns something called the shape memory effect, which is an interesting characteristic exhibited by certain alloys. This is a nickel-titanium alloy containing equal amounts of both nickel and titanium, and you can see that it's been coiled into a spring shape. What we're going to do in this very simple demonstration is basically just to plastically deform it, and you can see that's very easy to do, and you'd think that it'd be very difficult to get this spring back into its original shape, but actually we can do it very simply just by heating it with a hairdryer. So the key thing is that the nickel-titanium alloy has a high temperature austenite phase and a low temperature martensite phase. Now when we use the terms austenite and martensite, we're not referring to the iron carbon phases that you might be familiar with. Uh, many different systems exhibit um, a phase transformation between a high temperature austenite phase and a low temperature martensite phase. And the phase transformation occurs by a cooperative shear mechanism. And when the austenite transforms to martensite, there's several different orientations of the resulting martensite phase. And these are called variants. This slide shows schematically what happened during the experiment. So we started off with the alloy in the martensite phase at room temperature. We deformed it mechanically and it still stayed as martensite, but what happened is the material adopted a new set of variants. So we've, we've got deformed martensite with a new set of variants. We then heated it up and it changed back to austenite. Um, and the shape that the material adopted is something that's called its train shape. And I'll come back to that in a second. Um, we then cool the spring back down again, and the austenite transforms back to martensite, and it stays in this trained shape. The trained shape is the shape in which the transformation occurs most readily, and is related to residual stresses that are set up in the material during the training process. So when the spring was originally formed, the shape was constrained at a temperature well above the transformation temperature, and it was held there for a few minutes and then quenched, while still constraining the shape. So this makes the material predisposed to adopt the same shape uh, when the transformation occurs. This animation shows the crystal structures of the austenite and martensite phases and illustrates how the phase transformation occurs between the two. So this is the high temperature austenite phase. It's got a cesium chloride structure and the cubic unit cell is shown in blue here. An alternative way of describing the structure is in terms of these red unit cells, which are tetragonal, basically because this allows us to see the transformation more easily. So we're looking along the sides of the unit cell, and basically by dragging the slider up here, we can show what happens in the first stage of the transformation. And it, you can see that it changes into an orthorhombic crystal structure. So this is the orthorhombic crystal structure, which we can rotate here. And then to form the martensite structure, a shear occurs, which you can see by dragging the slider up here. So this is the important stage. You can see that the angle here changes from 90 to 98 degrees, so that's the shear part. And this model shows the final martensite structure. 